Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will discuss about essential properties of Laplace transform. So let me explain first property of Laplace transform that is based on linearity property. If you talk about linearity property, then one should know Laplace transform follows linearity. Linearity means if you have two signals x1 of t and x2 of t and if you identify Laplace transform of a1 x1 of t plus a2 x2 of t then Laplace transform will be a1 x1 of s plus a2 x2 of s. Always remember here x1 of s that is Laplace transform of x1 of t and x2 of s that is Laplace transform of x2 of t. So as per linearity property, one can say Laplace transform follows linearity, right? Now let me discuss about second property that is based on time shifting property. Let us consider we have one signal x of t and Laplace transform of x of t is x of s. Now with x of t, if you provide time shift and as if signal is x of t minus t naught, then after Laplace transform, here we need to multiply e to the power minus s t naught. If you have positive time shift over here, then here you will be having e to the power positive s t naught, right? So that is how time shift property is there. Now I'll discuss about frequency shifting property. Let us consider we have Laplace signal that is x of s. And after inverse Laplace, signal will be x of t. Then here, after frequency shift, signal will be x of s minus s naught. And if you apply inverse Laplace transform, then you will have to multiply e to the power s naught t along with x of t, right? So here you can observe, see in time shifting property, if you have negative sign over here, then you will have to multiply e to the power minus s t naught but if you have negative sign over here then here e to the power plus s naught t that you'll have to multiply right now i will discuss about next property that is based on time reversal property time reversal property means here we will be doing folding operation let us consider we have signal x of t and laplace transform of that is x of s after time folding, x of t will be x of minus t, right? So for x of minus t, we will be having Laplace transform that is x of minus s. Here I have seen in many books, there are some errors. In some books, they are writing like x of minus t Laplace transform is minus of x of minus s. But that is possible only for odd signals. In general, time reversal property is x of minus t Laplace transform will be x of minus s. Here negative sign that you need to multiply in case of signal is odd signal, right? Otherwise, this is generalized form of time reversal property of Laplace transform. Now let me discuss about next property that is based on time scaling property. See in time scaling property here we are scaling time t as per factor a. So x of a t Laplace transform will be 1 by a into x of s by a. So that is how time scaling property is there. Now let me discuss about next property that is based on differentiation property. Here one thing that you need to note down. See differentiation and integration property that I'll explain here by considering zero initial conditions right so if you have zero initial conditions and if you have signal x of t then as per differentiation property differentiation of x of t with respect to time laplace transform will be s multiplied with x of s right so here we are multiplying s over here if you have double differentiation then here there will be s square and always remember this is what i'm talking about with respect to zero initial conditions. If you don't have zero initial conditions, then there are few additional terms 
that we need to add that even I will explain in future coming videos along with the examples, right? When you talk about integration property and as if you have time domain signal x of t and integration of x of t with respect to time Laplace transform will be 1 by s into x of s. Here also if you have multiple integration like if you have double integration then in denominator there should be s square. If you have triple integration with respect to time then over here in denominator there will be s cube. Here also we are considering zero initial conditions, right? Now let me discuss about last property that is based on multiplication and convolution property. See in multiplication and convolution property, if you have two signals and if you have convolution of x1 of t and x2 of t, then after Laplace transform, but obviously we will be having frequency domain signal, means we will be having s domain signal that will be there in multiplication. Right. So, convolution that is getting converted into multiplication and if you have Laplace domain signals in convolution, then after inverse Laplace transform, there will be multiplication in time domain. Right. So, that is how properties are there with Laplace transform. I have already discussed this property in my earlier videos which is based on multiplication and convolution property. In future coming videos, I will explain you proof of all these properties one by one. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Still, if you have any confusion, just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.